Hey guys, what I'm working on today is assembly of this Coleman Power Sport mini bike. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. If you're a subscriber, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. This way you can get a uh, notification of the new videos that I posted. So what I've got here is the Coleman Power Sport 200cc gas powered camel ride on mini bike that's been sitting in my driveway for about eight months now. I don't have a garage so it's been taking a beating from the weather. So let's get this box moved and unpackaged. So after I got everything out of the box and I removed all the plastic, opened up all the small boxes and stuff like that, um, this is what was there. The frame with the back wheel attached, what I have to do is assemble the fork, the two fenders, the front wheel, the headlight, the brakes and the uh, handlebar. Shouldn't be too much of a bad job um, because you know it's just a couple of bolts and screws so I'm gonna check my manual and just find the right bolts and screws and, and, and nuts and get this process going so just let's follow along I'll try to uh, let you know at what point what I'm looking for and what I'm doing now this is not a detailed assembly process this is uh, just a quick assembly process um, the assembly is fairly easy so you shouldn't need too much step-by-step -step instruction on how to do this now this bike is a little bit heavy so you want to make sure you're able to have it balance um, when you're doing your assembly with your fork and your front wheel Otherwise, it'll tip on you on the side. You can put scratches on it. So just be aware of that. Now that I've got my pivot bolt uh, pushed in, let me go ahead and just tighten up the uh, the nut in the bottom, the, the wrench they provided, and then we'll go ahead and proceed with getting the other parts on the uh, bike. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my front fender and I'm going to attach it in there. <clears throat> I believe it's one bolt to hold that fender in place. Um, it comes with the bracket already installed so it's a matter of just mounting the fender um, onto the fork itself. So let me get that attached, tighten down and then I'll move on to the back fender. Now that the front is done, I'm going to go ahead and put this back fender on. Um, the back fender is a little bit of pain in the neck because where you have to catch the bolt is under between the wheel and the fender itself. So if you have big hands, it's going to be a tight spot to push your hand in there and try to get that nut attached to the bolt itself. So it might give you some trouble depending on how big your hand is or it might not. So if you have a kid, this is a time to grab that kid and put him to work to hold that nut in place or the bolt in place so you can capture that nut. Now that I've got the uh, rear fender installed, let's get the headlight installed. It pre it's pretty much pre-assembled with a plug on. So you just want to get your bolt washer with the uh, nut and just get it attached to the front fender. Make sure that you put the rubber washer where you're supposed to because that rubber washer is to absorb vibration because it shakes and vibrates. 
so make sure you put the rubber washer on top and the bottom to keep that uh, light uh, from scratching up the fender Now let's go ahead and get this front wheel installed. You want to make sure you get all your parts, your washer, um, installed in the right place. If you look at those two forks, there's an inside and there's an outside on the forks. You want to make sure that you have the forks facing the right direction on the outside. You'll see uh, later on in the video where I made the mistake and have one fork uh, turned around after I, um, I did the assembly. This part is going to be tricky since you're doing it by yourself. So you want to make sure that you're able to support the bike while uh, trying to get that front wheel in and getting your inside and outside washer in place and getting it through the other fork. It's a bit heavy, but you can uh, manage it. After the uh, front wheel was in place, I went ahead and started assembling the handlebar themselves, getting them into place and into the right position suited for my comfort and my fit. Once I get that all tightened up and squared away, I'm going to uh, zip tie my cables down to the bars and, and, and up to the handle itself. Just to note that this uh, bike, the the cables and the brake and the throttle assembly all came assembled with the handlebar. There was no need to connect any wires anywhere. Um, all came pre-assembled. It was just a couple of pieces that need to be assembled to the bike itself, and that was all that was needed to be done.
Now with the wheel itself, you want to pay attention to all your washers that you have to put in between your, your shaft and your nuts and your bolts. Um, <clears throat> you want to pay attention to the fork themselves. As you can see on the left fork on this assembly, the writings are facing on the outside. And on my right fork, as you're looking at it, the writings are in the inside. That got twisted around and I never noticed. And after assembly, as I was inspecting the bike, then I saw that the fork was backwards. So I need to get that fork rotated to the correct uh, position. Now let's go around and look at the engine itself. There you'll see the uh, fuel cut off. It cuts the fuel off. Uh, I guess you lets you drain the carburetor, burn it out of the carburetor, your choke assembly. Uh, and then here is your uh, fuel tank itself that's under the, uh, the seat cowl right there. There is your throttle cable. Make sure that's functioning and pulling. And here is your brake cable assembly. Want to make sure that that's covered and all in place because this part comes assembled already. So you want to make sure you just inspect your bike before you uh, fire it up and take it on a trip. Now this bike doesn't come with any oil in the engine so you need to check your manual get the appropriate oil and the appropriate fill the appropriate amount of oil through the fill hole um, the cap for the fill hole has a provided dipstick so you want to check your dipstick for the oil level ensure that the bike is level the engine is level this way uh, you're getting the right measurement of the oil that's needed to go into the engine itself so make sure you check your manual for the right oil and the oil level quantity for this bike Now that we got the oil in the engine, let's get some gas in this uh, gas uh, tank. As you can see, the tank has a provided strain to strain uh, any debris out of the fuel itself. Um, here you can see I tried to pour it without a funnel and that was not working out too good. Um, even though I tried a couple of times it was spilling. So I just ended up getting a funnel and attaching it and uh, pouring it through the funnel to facilitate the gas going in. I still got some seepage, but because of the nozzle itself on the can, so I end up pulling the nozzle off and just pouring it straight from the gas container. Now I'm going to do a walk around the bike and pull out all the uh, safety stickers that they have, the warnings, the labels, pull all that off um, and just toss it all away. Now what you're going to see me doing here is I'm adding on an hour meter, a tachometer meter with an hour meter. That way I can keep track of the hours on this engine for uh, maintenance purposes. So I ordered one from Amazon and I wrapped it around the uh, spark plug wire about 10 times and I routed through from the spark plug wire next to the engine zip tied and brought it back up to the top. Now let's get ready for startup and look at this tachometer. As you can see the engine started on the first pull.
now that I'm satisfied that this bike is uh, idling perfect, let's take it on the dirt and take it for a test run, see how it works. That's all I got on this bike, it was fairly an easy assembly, start up on the first pull, um, run smooth, seat is comfortable, here's the um, storage pocket that's on the bike itself that I didn't show you but uh, it's right uh, where the fake gas tank is and um, I've got that tachometer on so I can monitor the, uh, the hours for um, oil change and maintenance just to keep an eye on the engine itself so thanks for watching like share subscribe and see you in the next video